Hello and good evening, everybody. My name is Tony, and I am your host here tonight for the Hookup on Music, where we're going to attempt to dig deep and dig into and dig around and dig through on multiple different topics tonight that I have uh, picked out, and I hope you will enjoy. Um, before we even get dipping into those, I'd like you to uh, just say thank you if you went back and listened to the um, at the show broadcast that was this Friday. We um, went through Big Trouble in Little China, a classic, um, but even more of a classic um, is the music that's in the movie. Love the music. Um, if you get a chance, please go uh, to YouTube and uh, type in Big Trouble in Little China by John Carpenter. Or uh, let's let me just tell you his band Coupe de Vils, and uh, watch the music video. It's just a great time. Um, I can't get it out of my head because it feels like it's definitely something that you're not going to see very, very, very much. Uh, well, anymore in a movie, um, a director literally singing the theme for his movie, and an incredible movie at that. But. That being said, we are here tonight to dig in and dig out some different things. Let's let's get started, okay? Let's get started on, on, on what we have here to dig in. And, well, as always, what have we been listening to? What are you listening to? A lot, a lot of different things coming through, old, new. Um, you know, one thing, brand new, just came out. I'm really going to suggest that you go and take a listen to, and that's that's uh we brought it up last week on our, our new album release. Um, it, but it's it's Sleater Kinney's new album. Okay, it's called Little Rope. Um, really, 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 really good album. I'm a big fan of it because, well, um, the vibe, really big fan of even down to the album cover. But uh kick off into this new year, you know, just the just 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 a band that is still putting out very 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 solid albums okay um this is going to be their 11th album okay they started their first album in 1995 okay actually getting started it is a band in 1994 okay if you aren't familiar with the band currently is made up of um carrie brownstein and corinne tucker okay very 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 um awesome 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 um and that's who's playing on this newest album but, you know, I, I think what it, it says is that, uh, you know, if you're into good music, it is here in 2024. And Little Rope is definitely where where you should start. I mean, the album is 33 minutes and 59 seconds long. Um, what's cool about that is that it's it's a, you could take it in. You know, it's not, not to say 70-minute albums aren't awesome either, but this band doing a 70-minute album, I just personally can't see it. But, you know, it's lead off track hell you know, into lots and lots of other goodness is definitely why I think people are there to listen to the great Sleater Kinney. <laughs> you hear the instrumentation right there. It's great on the album. So please, please, please check that one out. Um, got to, got to give the love to, to a band who is just out there and they're, they're, um, you know, putting out good album, good, 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 good stuff. If you haven't seen recently, um, it was kind of cool. Um, Green Day got together with Jimmy Kimmel and they uh, played down in the subway. Um, really, really cool. Um, we're in disguises. Okay. We're in disguises. Um, but they were there to promote their new album that also came out January 19th called Saviors. Okay. Saviors is a 15 song album. Affair that is 46 minutes and two seconds. Okay. If you are interested in even even checking this out as a fan, I would say go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people I love when they do this, they compare it as the band's best work since do, 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 American Idiot, you know, the last one that was the big hit for them. So I love when they do that. I, I'm pretty sure some of the albums in between this one and that one, it was also a return to glory, a return to, oh, it's the fastness, this, that. But definitely, um, if I were you, I would go ahead and uh, check it out. You know, if you're a fan of the band, um, if you're not, maybe don't check it out. But definitely, um, what does it really hurt 
to uh, give this album a spin, okay? Rob Cavallo produced this album. If you're not familiar with his work, he has done everything from Linkin Park to Dave Matthews to Black Sabbath to Shinedown to Alanis Morissette, um, all the way to Eric Clapton and My Chemical Romance. So a big, big catalog this guy's got, working with Green Day again on this album. You know, I don't know. You know, again, check it out. It's definitely not Kerplunk. It's not even Dookie, but they're coming to town this summer. So check them out on their tour, whatever city you're listening, you, you live in. Um, they're coming with just, just it's going to be a, just, uh, you know, well, okay. How, how do I say this? If you're going on this tour, I, if you're going on this, this thing, please, um, you're going to have to let me know because they're performing Dookie and American Idiot in its entirety. Okay. And you're saying, Wow. How long is this going to be? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to take a take a quick. Okay, American Idiot itself. Okay, is, is is an hour. Okay, well maybe you know let's maybe that's not the worst. You know maybe uh you know maybe an hour. You know maybe uh Dookie's only thirty minutes long. Okay, well you know Dookie is forty minutes long. So an hour and forty there. So they're going to be putting on at least a two hour show. It's going to be a good time. Will it? Will you'll have to let us know. But also, recently, I've been really, 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 really digging into a little bit into my back catalog of things that I used to enjoy a long time ago and just revisiting them and seeing, do I still enjoy this? Do I, am, I, am, I, am I still enjoying this music? You know, and, and I'm finding out just so many, so many, so many, so many different things that, that I, it's been a while. You know, it's been a while, and uh, one thing um, of recent to find out is uh, Escape from L.A. soundtrack. Great, great soundtrack. Look at Stabbing Westward, Tool, White Zombie, Toadies. Look at this, Gravity Kills. Mixed in there, okay, is Tori Amos. Recently, someone reached out and said that Clutch was the very first time that they had ever heard of them, but even Deftones at the very bottom, Civ too, CIV. I think it's a quality soundtrack and it's definitely something that i think it's worth the spend and we might even dig deep into it at my little musical segment on the at the show podcast so make sure to look out for that um digging in this weekend in, into it uh got a got a soundtrack that I'm, I'm anxious to talk about it it's a soundtrack that's got everybody on the soundtrack from um rock set to the red hot chili pepper so we're going to check out and see what that is but uh tune in friday to check that out another Another band that I used to have in my headphones quite a lot was The Doors, okay? I don't know if you are familiar with them. Take that in the Peace Frog from Morrison Hotel. Great, great album. The band's fifth album. The band only had six albums during uh, Jim Morrison's lifetime. Um, I don't know if you would consider yourself quite of, what's the word I'm looking for, would you consider the albums that came out after Jim Morrison passed away as Doors albums? I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's something that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, they came out with three albums after he passed away. Other Voices, Full Circle, and American Prayer. Um, I don't know. I like to just consider the the first six. The ones with Jim are the ones that, you know, you want to focus in on. So, okay, as you go, of course, you got everything from, okay, uh, debut with the Doors. You got Soft Parade. You got Waiting for the Sun. You've got the, I forgot Strange Days, which was number two. I'm so excited to get to Morrison Hotel, which is the last track, Maggie McGill. Check that track out. Actually, actually, every album, all six of them, and the last album, L.A. Woman, the last track on every album is really, really good. And it's long, and it really, really, really uh, entices you in. When the music's over off of Strange Days, sign me up. But uh, honestly, I could still listen to the song People Are Strange and, and still be uh, brought into what I deem they were trying to do for that time. The instrumentation of the band, not just Jim Morrison, but John Densmore on drums, Ray Manzarek on keyboards, and of course, Robbie Krieger on guitar. Robbie Krieger's guitar lines are ones to definitely remember in your head. Of course, Ray Manzarek, 
even more importantly, um, is somebody to remember in your head because, well, Mr. Ray Manzarek uh, hails. If you're from, well, the area of Chicago, he grew up on the south side. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, he uh, graduated from St. Rita High School in 1956. Okay. Um, he then headed to DePaul University where he played piano. Okay. And he uh, also played intramural f- football. Very interesting to hear that Ray Manzarek uh, was doing all of this in Illinois, right, right around, right around the, uh, right around the bend here. Um, very, very cool that uh, that. And I, I could be wrong. Someone, please reach out and let me know. I think I've overheard that he even did. Uh, maybe he came back and did a, a show in the gym sometime or did something. Please, please, please let me know. Very, very, very exciting um, that Ray Manzarek was from the south side of Chicago, made his way all the way to California, and boom, the doors were founded. Um, But again, check into those albums, Deep Cuts. That's pretty much my favorite thing are Deep Cuts. Okay, so the doors are just loaded, 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 loaded with Deep Cuts. Okay, on the first album, you know, what would you consider a Deep Cut? You know, for me, the whole album isn't a Deep Cut, but I guess... 20th Century Fox, pretty pretty good uh, track there. Deep Cut, enjoy that one a lot. Um, if you get another opportunity on Strange Jays, um, one of my favorites are My Eyes Have Seen You. Really cool, cool again. Keyboard line, thank you very much. Uh, Waiting for the Sun, um, great, great, great third album. Deep Cut, I don't know. The Unknown Soldier, Not to Touch the Earth. Um, even Love Street, which I did not hear for the first time until the movie, which some people do not enjoy, but I enjoy Val Kilmer's performance. Um, also, I'm a big fan of the, what's the word I'm looking for? The title track on the Soft Parade, the Soft Parade, the song, okay, an eight minute and 40 second jam, which pretty much is compiled of four or five, six different sections. Um, there's so many different sections going on. Very, very, very interesting song to hear Jim at the very beginning. He sounds like he's on another world. And then by the end, the song just, just drifts off into something else. Um, last uh, last album with, I mean, Morrison Hotel again, Maggie McGill, last track, really, really good. And at the beginning of this, I talked about Peace Frog, another really, really good track. Um, but again, I always go back to this last album, L.A. Woman. Familiar with the title track? Yes. Familiar with Love her madly probably are you familiar with riders on the storm yes but if you have not listened to the wasp or crawling king steak or hyacinth house or been down so long please 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 listen to that along with cars hiss by my window but uh that being said those are some things of which we have been listening to and looking deeper into here at the hookup um again check out that sleater kinney album you can tell right here on the screen if you're watching the cover is very, 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 very enticing. The album is very, very enticing. And that would, would I would say, to be a huge, huge, huge pick of the week to go ahead and dig into. So do that for me. Um, now we head on to what I deem to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a tale, a little bit of a story. I don't know if you remember this out there. Some of us might, some of us might not. Okay, there was things called the Columbia House. It was all called different things. Different, 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 different types of things. Okay, back in the 70s, you know, you would get 13 records or tapes for $1. Can you believe it? Why wouldn't everyone in the world sign up for this deal? Okay, as we went along into the 90s, okay, it was 12 hot hits for a cool penny. And if you were to look at one of these or pull one of these up, they would have so many great artists. I mean, I remember seeing the Chili Peppers on here for the first time. Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and I'd just be like, wow, this is just just so, 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 so cool. Um, but you know what ends up happening is, is that it ends up being something that's just a little bit uh, not, oh, what's the alert I'm looking for? It doesn't end up being, um, well, what it really ends up to be. And, you know, the thing about it is, is that, you know, it, it kind of fizzled out. Um the thing is, is that, number one, okay, the whole thing was, was, was what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, I, I don't know what to say. It was, a, it was a certain time period, okay, where you would, 
you would be able to buy all of this stuff, okay? And then what it would end up happening is, is that you get all this 10 for now they weren't wrong. And then they'd start sending you other stuff and you'd be billed for it. So I personally um, never got to do this because right away I was told it was a scam. But I had lots of friends who would dig into this this hot, this hot deal. And if you were out there and you were ever a part of this, please let me know a little bit more of how it worked. Because from what I remember, um, a lot of people would be like, wow, look at this. This is really cool. I'm going to buy all these CDs and get them for only a penny. Wow, this is great. And then what would end up happening is, is again, these other CDs would come in and it wouldn't be the ones you'd want. Like you, you ordered Pantera, Guar, and Metallica, and you get those. And then all of a sudden, a month later, you're getting bad by Michael Jackson or George Michael or something along that. Not to say those albums are bad, but if I'm sure if you're a fan of the first three, you surely are not looking for those, and it's not something that's on your radar. It's just not. It's not on your radar to to come and, and get those albums sent to you, and especially because then what they would do is is they would you would be charged full price, so like twenty three dollars a CD. It was it was really kind of crazy the way the whole entire thing worked. When it happened, you know, a lot of people ended up thinking that it was a negative um, billing practice. Um, a lot of people get uh, just just pretty much it would what would happen is this what stuff would arrive in your junk mail. So personally, these would always arrive to the house, and I could just sit and look at these like a magazine. I'd be like, "Wow, look at these! Look at all these albums!" Even looking at it back on the screen before doing this today, I uh, didn't realize or forgot about how much I really put into some of the stock and to these these things. When not even I'd circle them. I'm going to get this one, that one, this one, that one. Well, a time came where um, somebody in my class, I could believe it was seventh grade. I, it has to have been or sixth grade. He has this booklet. It's a Columbia House booklet, okay? It's got all the bands and everything inside it. All I want to really do is, is look at this thing because, again, as you know, that's why we have the show. I was obsessed with music even back in sixth and seventh grade. Um, just wanted back then I just wanted it. I want more and more and more and to be able to look at a magazine. Well, I had a Sega Genesis controller. Okay. And I'll never forget me and this, this gentleman in my class who was a friend. Um, he went and it was like, okay, let's, let's see. Um, you know, let's trade for a couple days. I'll take this magazine that was for free that you got in the mail and I'll give you this controller. A couple of days passed. I wanted my controller back. He would not give me the controller. The controller was in his backpack. Okay. I'll never forget this. The controller was in his backpack and I wanted my controller back. I got in trouble for going into the backpack and getting my controller out and putting this, this Columbia house magazine into the backpack. Um, just, just really, 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 really confused me of why I got in trouble. Cause number one, I mean, maybe it was a learning lesson. I should never have been trading a, a, a game controller for a Columbia House magazine. But uh, I, I still, I guess, or, you know, I could understand. I mean, it was his property that I went into, but it was my controller in the property. And he was holding it hostage over a Columbia House magazine, which I'm still to this day floored that I would do this. But this is the dedication that I had to music, everybody. That's why I'm sharing this story of the dedication of wanting to give up a video game controller to get more of that music and that's still today um you know this was actually i could say coming towards the end of some of my my, my serious video game playing because at this moment when you could see that a magazine with just album titles on it or in it this is something that i'm definitely definitely going to want to get myself involved with more but crazy little story it was a crazy little time for a crazy little thing that has been um that went on you know, another thing that's crazy and, you know, we love around here is Iron Maiden. Now, we've talked about Iron Maiden quite a lot on this show, but tonight what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these covers, okay? Uh, a poll went out recently, okay, that i seen, and it was like, what is your favorite Iron Maiden cover? The one thing I want to start with, but just looking at these covers currently right here on the screen, are just pretty much the coloring, okay? The coloring in the letters, the way the letters look, 
um, just the way the whole art process for Iron Maiden has um, went down, I think is <clears throat> honestly some of the really coolest and um, honestly some of the just the just 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 some of in, in heavy music. I don't, I don't know if there's a more cooler set of album covers, really. You know, I mean, it pretty much speaks to you what's on these album covers. The number of the beast was the first one that I, I took notice to. Um, but recently, peace of mind. Um, definitely, definitely enjoy that one. The gentleman that was the one if you're looking and he's in the top, it's in the top right all the way down. And he's a man, he's chains like it looks like he's kind of like in an insane asylum, you know. But you know, look at Power Slave, you know, look at like the way the yellow, the temples that's one's really cool. Eddie's face is like on, on any, um, you know, like a like a, a just a cool, cool symbol. Fear of the Dark, though, the little creature there in the trees. I always thought of him to be someone like the little creature that's in um, a little movie called Twilight Zone, the movie, um, in the airplane scene there. Really, 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 really awesome. But just the indication that the band, even on their current Somewhere in Time tour, um, that album covers in the second from top row, and it's we're kind of it looks futuristic, kind of like Terminator. I think that album... You know, uh, for a long time, I was like, I don't know if I like this album, 80s, you know, I don't know, lady, I like that album quite a lot. Wasted Time, um, one of my personal favorites, and just a really, really all-around good, 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 good thing, you know, because, you know, we give you the word here. That's what we always got to do. But that being said, really, really awesome. Um, but their newest album cover, you know, look at this. They're still putting out what I would deem to be top, top, top quality album covers. Um, I'm still working on the pronunciation for this new album, Senjutsu. Um, but really cool, the Samurai, um, Back to the Big Trouble in Little China, um, just gives off a really cool, you know, like some of the... Um, some of the characters in that movie wear this the same outfit. Um, but really, really cool lettering again. Just the way the letters all kind of look with the red. Um, great album all around. All these albums, the music on them is amazing. We we know that. But we're just looking at how cool the album covers are. I mean, you know, when you got when you got cool samurais holding swords, you're saying to yourself, this is definitely going to be what I would say, uh, just an all-around. Just, just an all-around uh, good, good, good album or good experience, and and you know what? That's where where we always seem to find ourselves here. Just, just having a good time. Okay, I mean, I'm, I, I'm just, 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 just ecstatic here to be be sharing and talking about Iron Maiden album covers with you. Okay, going back to that Columbia House, I remember seeing the Fear of the Dark album um, in there. Can I could I have ever imagined that there is even something called a podcast or, or, or a show or a radio stay or anything that you could be able to just talk and say and, and share these awesome things with each other and, and do that? So I really, really appreciate you um, tuning in and uh, let us know what your favorite Iron Maiden um, cover is, because we would love to hear that. Um, late, recently, I've been doing a lot of introspection um introspectiveness i don't know what the correct term you would use there but uh allison chains has been on my mind a lot lately and not just allison chains but lane staley as a whole okay and his story as a whole and just kind of like again if these things didn't happen and this happened where would they be you know would they be somebody who is like a tool who's you know, United Center sellouts, you know, big stadium sellout tours, or would they have went the other way? I mean, they're currently still a great functioning band out there. And if you get a chance to see them live, um, I would definitely, definitely check them out. Uh, three of the same, three of the four guys are still in the band. But again, you know, you, you go back and you look at what could have been or what, what should have been or what, what, what might have been. But I mean, those, those, those albums with Lane Staley, I mean, you're talking about some of the, some of, some of the best, okay? Just some of the best, best, best albums um, of, of, of all time. You know, and, and, and the reason why I even bring this up or the reason why today we're, we're even going through this is just for the fact of 
Well, um, jar of flies. Okay. This year, um, tomorrow, actually, the 25th, we are going to be celebrating 30 years of jar of flies, folks. Jar of flies, a great, 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 great landmark album. Okay. Um, no excuses. I stay away. Um, just, 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 if you have not, not the opening track, you got to hear it for yourself. I love this album so much because it's pretty much like, wow, what, what really, 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 really could have been. Okay. Jar of Flies. Okay. It's not a long album. Only it's got seven songs. It's 30 minutes. So, I mean, it's almost a Sleater Kinney length, but again, um, it, 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 it's different for them. They were they were out on tour a long time, and they wanted to see what their new bassist Mike Inez was bringing to the table. And they they really busted out the acoustics. That song's got some really really cool guitar on it, and just the lyrics. Uh, Lane's lyrics are just oh, they are they are they are biting. Okay, um, nutshell, which now unfortunately is. is is the song that makes the rest of the band think of him the most because he was being very honest in the song. Um, if you listen to the lyrics, um, pretty much to me, I don't know a song that gets more real. Um, and yet I fight and yet I fight this battle all alone. No one to cry to no place to call home. The one thing we always have to remember is it doesn't matter how top or where you are or whatever band you're in. Um, it doesn't matter how close people could be to you. Sometimes the struggle is really so huge that uh, sadly just, you know, I think of just many, 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 many different situations in this whole entire thing. And uh, the album itself, dig into the album, you know, and think of think of what could have been. Think of what's going on right there. Um, just, just think of all of the greatness that this band preceded at this place and this place in time. At a later date, we'll go through other albums by them, but Jar of Flies is celebrating 30 years. Okay. On top of being an amazing album, it's just got a really, 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 really cool cover. And on top of having a really, 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 really cool cover, it's got great songs. Okay. Just like everything we talked about here tonight. You know, it's all about the great songs. You know, it's all about, you know, what 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 can we throw and listen to to make us feel good in, in the moment. And, you know, we do a really good job that together here because we're always interacting and we're always talking and you're always reaching out. And I'm available 24-7. You have any, any non-musical items? I mean, that's the reason, Okay where we, we go through these things together and, and we, we experience them. And, and, and reading about Lane, it makes you just think of how precious and how awesome just listening to music and, and probably playing music for some is. So uh, go back tonight. And as I stated, listen to that Slater Kinney album. You're really not going to regret it. Okay? Listen to those Six Doors albums. Okay, um, even if it's the songs that you are familiar with, Blast Love Her Madly So Loud and Love You Two Times, um, So Loud, it's go it's going to just 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 blow the speakers out. I mean, that's really all I can say here tonight is we want to blow speakers out. We want to rock so much that uh well, you know, people are going to to say, hey, you know what? This is this is this is this is this is this is it. It's uh, love me two times. I think that's what I said, right? Or did I say love you? No, I said love me two times. Well, whatever I said, folks. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Okay, if you have not yet, please, 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 and go back this Sunday. I just dropped um, a 1995 album. Cover. If you have not checked that out, please check that out and all the other old album cuts. Everything from. Um, Jeff Healy from Roadhouse uh, just announced a new one of those. And then we also got uh, a, a little bit of, uh, like I said, 1995, dig into that, Hums on there, some Primus, some Tupac, some this, some that. 
go back and do this, okay? Please, for me, um, please check out this Friday. We're going to be live for At The Show podcast, talking the usual suspects. It's going to be great. Um, go back and check At The Draft podcast. It's really, really, it's getting drafty in here. Um, I always mess that up at the show. It's getting drafty in here podcast. Check that out. Really, really awesome. The last episode was some of the worst transactions in Chicago sports history. Um, go check out the uh, sadisticpenguinstudios.com website. It's got really, really cool articles. Really, uh, CPG uh, is really putting out some really awesome, awesome stuff on video games he's been playing and really awful movies he's been seeing. So everybody out there, thank you so much. I hope you have a really good weekend. My name is Tony. This is the Hookup on Music. If you ever would like to, to tune in or join or come on in, please, please shout out. Until the next time, keep those double grooves spinning, everybody. See you next week.